Here we're gonna look at two interesting double sums. We're gonna first determine if they converge or diverge, and if they converge, we'll actually find the sum. So let's see this first one. We have the sum as n goes from one to infinity, and then this sum as m goes from n to n squared of one over m squared. So just looking at this, it's not super clear whether this should converge or diverge because we know by the p-series test, a similar looking single sum will converge. So let's dive into this. So we have the sum n equals one to infinity, and then the sum m equals n to n squared of one over m squared. Now, because this inner sum is a finite sum, and thus it obviously converges, we can change the order of summation here. So let's go ahead and do that. So notice here we have n is bigger than or equal to one, and then m is bigger than or equal to n, and then m is less than or equal to n squared. But there's no bound on n, and thus there's no bound on n squared, so this is just zooming off to infinity. Okay, so now what I wanna do is take the square root of all parts of this inequality. So that's gonna give us one. That's gonna be less than or equal to the square root of n, which is gonna be less than or equal to the square root of m, which is gonna be less than or equal to n. Now what I'll do is I'll patch these two inequalities together to form one where we have n at the center instead of m at the center as we started with. So notice I can use this fact here that n is bigger than or equal to the square root Root of m and the square root of m is bigger than or equal to 1 and then here we can use the fact that n is less than or equal to m so putting those two things together we'll see that 1 is less than or equal to the square root of m which is less than or equal to n which is less than or equal to m and then m can be as large as we want so this is the inequality that we want for changing the order of our summation but you might look at this and say, well, m is not always a perfect square, so this term right here is not always a positive integer. But what we can see is that if n is bigger than or equal to the square root of m, and n is a positive integer, that means that n is bigger than or equal to the ceiling of the square root of n. So that means we can transform this inequality into the following inequality, which only has positive integers. So we have one is less than or equal to the ceiling of the square root of m, which is less than or equal to n, which is less than or equal to m. And this is exactly the inequality that we need in order to change this um, order of summation. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So now we're gonna have this outer sum will be the sum as m goes from one to infinity. And then this inner sum will be the sum as n goes from the ceiling of the square root of m all the way up to m. And now we have the same kind of thing here. We have one over m squared. Great. But now with respect to the inner summation, one over m squared is a constant. So what we're doing is we're really adding up one over m squared a bunch of times. And how many times? Well, we are adding it m minus the ceiling of the square root of m plus one times. So in other words, the starting term minus, sorry, the ending term minus the starting term, and then we have to add one in. So let's go ahead and see what that gives us. So here we have the sum m equals one to infinity. And now we're gonna have m minus the ceiling of the square root of m plus one over m squared. And let's go ahead and point out that this inner sum collapsed to this term right here. And that's because that inner sum was just a sum of a bunch of constants. Those constants depended on the outer summation. Okay, great. So now what we wanna do is simplify this a little bit. So now notice that this is bigger than or equal to the sum as m goes from one to infinity of m over m squared. So that's gonna be one over m minus, so we can replace that ceiling with just the square root of m because we've included an inequality. So I'm gonna write this as minus the square root of m over m squared, but now that's gonna be very clearly one over m to the three halves. Okay, great. 
and then next we have plus one but since we have this and next we have this plus one but because we have this inequality we can forget about the plus one now what we want to use is use this tool that I recalled over here called the limit comparison test and that says if you've got two sequences of positive numbers and the limit as n goes to infinity of the ratio of these sequences is equal to L and L is bigger than zero but less than infinity so in other words that limit exists it is non-zero and non-infinite then the series a n and the series b n do the same thing in other words they either both converge or they both diverge so that's exactly what we're going to do here we're going to use the limit comparison test between this series and kind of the dominant term of this series and the dominant term of this series will be the harmonic series which we know diverges so i'll just go ahead and say we're doing the limit comparison test with the sum as m goes from one to infinity of one over m. Okay, so that means what we really wanna do is look at the limit as m goes to infinity of one over m minus one over m to the three halves divided by one over m. So again, that's just using this limit comparison test set up, but now that simplifies pretty easily to the limit as m goes to infinity of one minus one over m to the half just by multiplying by the reciprocal of one over m, in other words, multiplying by m in the numerator. But now this term right here goes to zero because the denominator is getting arbitrary, arbitrarily large, so we get that this limit equals one. But that tells us that the harmonic series and our series do the same thing, but it's well known the harmonic series diverges, so that tells us that our series also diverges. Okay, great, so we're done with this first example. So I'll go ahead and clean up the board and we'll look at this second example. So now let's get started on this second double sum. So we have the sum as n goes from one to infinity and then the sum as m goes from one to infinity of one over m plus n factorial. So again, it looks like this one might converge because if we had a single sum of this form, it would obviously converge to something having to do with the number e. So here we're gonna make use of the arithmetic geometric mean inequality. So let's just recall that that's, that says that m plus n over two is bigger than or equal to the square root of m times n. But now notice that's exactly the same as m plus n is bigger than or equal to two times the square root of m n. I just multiplied both sides of this, that inequality by two. Another fact that we're gonna use is the fact that for k bigger than or equal to seven, we have k factorial is bigger than k to the fourth. So you can easily check this with induction. Maybe if someone wants to sketch the proof in the comments, that would be great. Okay, so now the thing that I wanna notice is that if m plus n is bigger than or equal to seven, we have m plus n factorial is going to be bigger than or equal to m plus n to the fourth power. But then taking this term right here and then combining it with the amgm inequality, in other words, raising both sides of this inequality to the fourth power, we see that this is bigger than or equal to two to the fourth, which is 16, and then the square root of mn to the fourth, which is going to be m uh, squared n squared. Okay, great. So now what that tells us is that one over m plus n factorial is going to be less than or equal to one over 16 and then one over m squared times one over n squared. Great. But now if we take the sum of both sides of this, we see that the sum as m and n go from one to infinity of one over m plus n factorial is going to be less than or equal to this sum as m and n go from 1 to infinity of 1 over 16. I'll put that out front. And then we have 1 over m squared times 1 over n squared. So we just got done proving that this double sum converges. Now, furthermore, we see that it is a sum of all positive terms. That means it absolutely converges, which tells us we can reorder this any way that we want. So what I want to do is think about the indices. Notice that they are allowed to be anything. 
So that means M and N are not related to each other, but we might wanna introduce a new index, and that new index has to do with the term that we're actually summing. Notice that M comma N, those are both strictly less than M plus N. So you might say, well, why are they strictly less than M plus N? That's because M and N are both bigger than or equal to one. And so this is at most like, or at least M plus one or N plus one, depending on which one we're working off. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is maybe write this as our new index K. And notice here that K is going to be bigger than or equal to two. And now what we can do is discard one of our old indices in lieu of our new index K. So notice here we have one is less than or equal to M. So we'll discard the index N, which is strictly less than K. So now we'd like to tweak this inequality. So this portion of the inequality is not strict. And we can do that by rewriting this as one is less than or equal to m, which is less than or equal to k minus one. And here we have if m is strictly less than k, that's equivalent to m is less than or equal to k minus one. Now the next thing that I wanna do is maybe add one to all parts of this inequality. And notice that's gonna give us two is less than or equal to m plus one, which is less than or equal to k. Okay, great. Now what I wanna do is use each of these parts to rewrite my sum. So I can write my outer sum as k goes from two to infinity. So that's gonna give me this sum as k goes from two to infinity. And then my inner sum will be m equals one to k minus one m equals one to k minus one, and then I have one over m plus n factorial, but I renamed that k. So I have one over k factorial. Okay, good. Now what I wanna notice is that with respect to the inner sum, this is a constant. So that means we're adding this constant one over k factorial, the number of times exhibited by this inner sum. But this inner sum has exactly k minus one terms. So if we add one over k factorial to itself k minus one times, that gives us the sum k equals two to infinity, k minus one over k factorial. But now we can simplify that pretty easily. That's gonna give us this sum k equals two to infinity of one over k minus one factorial minus one over k factorial. Okay, so now what I wanna do is split this into two sums. So that's gonna give me this sum k equals two to infinity of one over k minus one factorial minus this sum k equals two to infinity of one over k factorial. Now I'd like to re-index this first sum so that it looks a little bit like the second sum. So what I'll do is I'll exchange k for k plus one. So that means this term right here is gonna become just k, and then I'm gonna start my sum at one because if k plus one is two, then k is equal to one. So that gives me this sum as k goes from one to infinity of one over k factorial minus this sum as k equals two to infinity of one over k factorial. Now those are exactly the same sum, except this first one has an extra term when k equals one, which means Everything here cancels except for the first term of the first sum, which is one over one factorial. In other words, it is one. So that gives us a solution to the second sum that's gonna be equal to one. And that's a good place to stop.